Hey guys, what is going on? Well, I'll tell you what's going on. We are on the next episode of the rebuild of the Galliano junk pile. An old arch top that was tore up from the floor up. I've got a playlist going on on this thing that talked about, uh, it introduced it, um, told us how to steam off the neck, um, get the back of the thing off, and this episode is about fixing all the internal deficits, all the cracks, all the uh, tone bar missing. Uh, it's got a mess going on. We learned in the last episode. Anyway, bookmark that playlist up there because I add things to it and you will just be able to go to the latest episode. But this one is called Crack Rehab. How's that for clickbait? But again, we're going to learn about all kinds of things. Let me put this down for a second because I have to tell you something before I forget. See, I was just, I can see myself in the camera and believe you me, I am about as disamazed as the beauty I'm looking at as you are completely and utterly disamazing. But I'm sitting here and I just saw a chick flick teal right here. And you know what? It reminded me of Curtis Novak pickups. And I want to give a shout out to Curtis Novak pickups because if you have an old instrument, junky, not junky, whatever, and you need something that is period correct, not only in how it looks, but how it sounds, you got to go with Curtis Novak. Look at this, you covetous sinners, you. Yeah, you know what that is. You know what that is. If you don't know what that is, Oh boy, you need to know what that is. Isn't that the most beautiful thing you've ever heard in your life? Anyway, let's put this away. Curtis Novak pickups. Look at that thing. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Okay, where were we? Oh yeah, back on the Galliano junk pile. I've got stuff rolling in now. The hardware is coming in. I've got to do some things that are going to balance some things out. Um, I'm going to load up the headstock with something really cool and I need to put weight in and stuff. But here's where we're at. And you're going to see a lot from the overhead autopsy camera. But I've learned a lot about this guitar, about stuff and I'm going to pretend that I knew it the whole time when in actuality I was learning things five seconds learning things blah, 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 rented lifts five seconds before you will but shh, shh. don't tell anybody anyway like mystery of the universe do you know what this is It's funny, I couldn't find anything about it. I, I looked up and I went to all of the YouTube master certified, YouTube certified master luthiers, every one of them, uh, including me, and um, nobody knew what this stuff was. So I reached out to my nose and tried to do this inconspicuously failing. Anyway, I reached out to S. Nathaniel Adams. Do you know who Nath S. S. Nathaniel Adams is? I know you don't. That's why I'm going to tell you. I call him the whiz kid of junk arch top guitars because he knows everything. I'm going to give you a link to his site below along with Curtis Novak's site. But it's like he has all this information about 
K's, Harmonies, Regals, Oscar Schmidt, anything and everything. And I'm thinking, this this guy's an old man. Well, it turns out he's 25 years old and he has only been looking into this in since 2017. That's one, two, th yeah, five, okay? Even in Oklahoma. Anyway. So I got a hold of Nath S. Nathaniel Adams and said, hey, what is this? He didn't know. Wow, put up a historical marker. Because when S. Nathaniel Adams and I together don't know something, yeah, put up a historical marker. There should be one right here right now. So I had to think it out myself, which I am really good at. You all know that. Or I can make stuff up and make it look like it's real. And you all know that. So anyway, something else I was thinking about was I've seen while looking for marks inside of a guitar or date stamps, this stuff slopped all over the place. And I was under the impression maybe somebody painted over something because they used uh, last year's stock in the following year. But then I started thinking, what is this, Lakewood, California? Which, by the way, their motto is Tomorrow's City Today. So if you want to know who's going to win the horse race in L.A. or what year, da, 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 this stuff, yeah, Lakewood, Tomorrow's City Today. So I have seen this stuff slopped on, and all of a sudden it hit me. I know what this is. I know why it's there. And you will, too if you wait long enough for me to tell you. Because I'm the rambling man, remember? Anyway, got a couple other questions for you. Mysteries of the universe. Like, I have to be really careful here with this one. You're not going to believe this. This is completely and utterly just amazing. Do you know what's in here? Of course you don't, but you're going to learn. That's all I can tell you about that. Mystery of the universe. This wood is flat. So flat that Columbus should go with three ships and try to figure out if it's really flat or if it's round. Like this arch top back. Do you see this? Does that look flat to you? So tell me how you could be successful in trying to... This crack that's running here, you see that? How would you cleat this crack, in other words, put something on here to stop it from cracking when whatever you're using is flat and this is round? And maybe that's why this amateurish, even, well, not as, not as amateurish as my repairs, but there's reasons why the past repairs on this guitar have failed over the last 80 years. And it's got something to do with round and flat and we'll, we'll cover that but anyway there's a lot of stuff to do here and we're going to find out that while we're in here there's some things we could think about doing that involve the neck and hardware and putting things on because you very seldom have this opportunity and I have learned through this guitar that maybe taking the back off is the best thing you could do but anyway notice I've put some marks on here and there's marks on the body, and um, well, I could go on all day, and I probably will, unless you drag me off to the bench. So let's get over there and find out how to do some crack rehab. Okay, guys, let's start here. If I take a caliper, a digital caliper, and I put it on a spot here where I can get to the measurement of the wood and get the thickness... It's just a tad under four millimeters. And when you start getting into the guys that carve arch tops with scrapers and chisels and all that, you kind of see that that's a number that they hit when they start to fine tune and tap tone and that kind of thing. Um, and so let's think about this this way. This was not hand carved. This was pressed. So... You take a piece of wood that's flat, it has grain running every way, and you 
basically set it on a form. Let's say you've seen those uh, potato chip bowls made out of two a record where they actually put a bowl, a stainless steel bowl upside down and then set the record in <laughs> over the bowl at 215 in an oven and set a nesting bowl over the top. That's how they make those. I'm not the one that told you that when you ruin someone's <laughs> oven. But so here's what happens. They take a piece of wood and they press it and steam it to give it this shape, okay? Let's, let's be fair enough to realize that let's say there's a tree growing up against a pole here. And the tree expands and expands and it grows around the pole. The tree is going to put on a different structure than a piece of wood that's been pressed and steamed and then expected to keep that shape forever. And let's say that there's in that compression and stretching or whatever that there's some tension that happens over time. Let's just let's just go with that. And and let's go with the idea that this is anything but flat. I can put stuff underneath here and let's figure out that if I say were to put a bridge right here on this part that's curved and I press down with string weight, that it's going to want to spread things because this pushing down causes this to go down, go sideways, go with all that, just pretend with me. And let's say that over the years, there's a lot of things that are gonna cause this to wanna to split. So it dawned on me, I've looked in a few guitars and seen this tape. And I thought, what is this tape all about? Well, suddenly it dawned on me, you press these things, you bend them unnaturally against everything that nature taught them to do, of course they're going to want to split. So, what is this? Well, it dawned on me. If you have grain running this way and you're bending it and twisting it and pushing on it and do whatever, it's going to want to split wherever the tension is. So it, it kind of, I put two and two together and said, well, this is cloth. Maybe someone put this together in the factory and maybe they just went like this all the way across here as a preventative in the future for this not to split. And I really think that's what that's all about. So I think when we start fixing this, we might go back to the use of cloth. This is just some kind of linen. There's different weaves of it av available. And I think that another mystery was solved when I realized they were cranking these out by the hundreds every day. So you had someone, maybe their job was to take this piece off of the person that pressed it, it come down the assembly line, and I would just take a, a brush like this, slop some whitewash, I would bet you it's almost that color right there, just slop it on there, lay this down, boop, boop, and send it off. And then when the guitar got glued up, they weren't interested <laughs> in making sure this was pretty. I think this is slop and over slop or whatever you call it comes off of a brush. It's certainly not over spray. But the problem I have is that my repairs are always identified with Chick Flick Teal. So, do you have any of this cloth that is Chick Flick Teal? Well, guess what? <laughs> I made some. That's what was in the big bottle. Okay, and um, don't ask questions about the big bottle. Don't ask questions about why this appears to the untrained eye to be somewhat of a tone of Chick Flick Teal. You're not seeing that. Just go with what I tell you and believe it. Now, why am I talking about this? Does this look round or rounded to you, right? No, it doesn't. So, this is spruce. I got it from Anirondack Tone Woods. So, let's say that I want to put these splits back together. And let's say I want to cut small pieces to do this. The obvious thing is I would cut 
pieces, take them to the belt sander, round them off a little bit so they would actually fit down in here. But I think that this cloth tape is going to be a good solution. So I'm going to use that there, but I'm going to cleat stuff up. Now, I want you to see here, someone used a piece of, I think, which is common veneer that you buy at a hardware store here. You see that? And, of course, it's not curved. It's flat. And so it's no doubt to me that it broke out over a while. Um, next thing I want to tell you about is they have these magnets. These magnets are kind of scary because they're very powerful. They're also very brittle. So you handle these luthier magnets by sliding them. And you certainly don't want to get your fingers in between them because I want you to watch this. As soon as I get this anywhere near here, pow. Now, I can put these magnets, again, remembering that things are curved, and I can't expect to put something that's this big on a flat surface, but I can put one here like so, and then slide this one over the top. Oop, I need to turn it over. like so, and I can use these magnets to take once I get things lined up. But again, remember that these things will take your fingernails and smash your fingers if you don't pay attention. But the main thing here is as you watch me do some of this, we want to remember this is off the back of the guitar. I put some marks that will line up with the body of the guitar. And as I put this back together and see these big splits like this, maybe this is a good place to demonstrate the magnet for you. There's a couple different planes going on here. As I press this together and I get this all straight here, and try to keep its shape, what will happen is inevitably when I get it back on the guitar, it's going to kind of want to bust and break. I think we can take this cloth tape as we pull things back together and use a little binding tape here and there. Binding tape is really, really good stuff. And get things lined up a little bit. And use our little curved shims and things. But once I get these things put together, I think a good way to do this is get out our hide glue, cut this tape down a little bit, and use this kind of stuff to give us our, our base framework underneath to get all these things lined up again. You've got this plane, this plane, this thing. Everything has to match up. If it doesn't, and you put it on the guitar, the minute you start gluing everything up, it's going to crack everywhere else. So, Okay, guys, I was thinking about this a little bit more. I'm going to show you quickly how to do one of these crack repairs. So I've got some Chick Flick Teal cleats. I've got some Chick Flick Teal uh, linen cloth. i got Chick Flick Teal scissors, and I've got hide glue and a couple of brushes that are the appropriate size. The hide glue is hot. I've got warm water and a wet rag. You'll notice that I... Let's grab Chick Flick Teal Pointer so they don't feel that their work is being subcontracted out without meat and confer. So I put a couple clamps on this. You know we had a lot of steam around and I lined everything up with the dots uh, and the marks I made. So um, we don't want to have this over arched here um, because if that's the case when we get all this done and put everything back together it's going to split somewhere else. These cracks opened up. They were there when I got the guitar. So I'm going to take this little inside of a liner of a cigar box that I have um, tapered down. And we're going to put that there like this. And then we're going to use a special tool called My Fat Belly. And we are going to get the edge of these 
together with a clamp, a heavy clamp. And I want you to notice that you can see in here, hopefully, that the kerfing is right there. So we don't want to clamp over the kerfing. But we'll put this here like this. And then, again, push everything together and put that clamp on just at the edge. Now, we're going to take a piece of tape and use this because we're going to glue this from the inside and so that will keep that crack where it needs to be and then of course there's one more over here and we will do the same notice that they're not clipping exactly together which is okay my guitars do not look like Stradivarius instruments now we'll take this clamp off here I think and actually maybe put it away no I don't think so I think we'll put it on the pile with the rest of the stuff we'll put the body aside okay now that this is turned over we're going to take some of our warm water that's in our glue pot and we're going to go along this one here and wet it down we're going to get a little bit moisture in here because this is all dried out now if you look here it's trying to kick back a little bit. If I have a place that I want things to be uneven, it's on the inside, definitely not on the outside. And I want to point out here that this piece of cleating here is definitely not the way you want to cleat a guitar because um, the, the grain is running this way. So as this splits, so does this. You, you definitely want to go... Uh, against the grain is kind of what you want to do so if the grain is running this way it needs to be running this way on the cleat so that said I'm going to use some of our chick flick teal uh, fabric here and I'm gonna to need to run all the way down the cleat and this one runs up to about there so I'm gonna take my chick flick teal scissors and I'm gonna cut that one about right there I don't really need it to be that wide so I'm gonna fold this like so guys this you know if you can fold this you can also fold towels at home don't act like you don't know how to do any of the domestics because guess what believe it or not regardless of how you've tried they will watch your video someday and they will bust you knowing how to do this so anyway we're going to cut this down the middle and make a couple sets because this stuff is just that valuable now later you're going to say ken how did you get that so perfect and and i'll say other than me doing it myself because i'm ken i put this little clip at the end you see that and then i just do that like so now Again, we're going to clear this stuff out of the way. We are not going to put it away. That's not what we do here. My hide glue heater is metal, so it's magnetic. So we're going to look here and look at that. Do, do, do. Do you know that song? It's a Bob Log song. There's a link to it right up there, right about now. Anyway, you see what we're doing here? Yeah, that. That split stops right at the edge of that. So I am going to come down fairly close to the edge, but not all the way because I'm going to need to put a cleat just before the curving. So we will do this like so. Now we are going to take our special brush. Where did it go? It's hiding under here because I guess it and hide glue don't get along. Sometimes if you don't wash these things out, they're a death sentence. So brushes are afraid of hide glue, whether you know that or not. So we're going to dampen the brush with water to create the right amount of tension or lack thereof. And, you know, there might be a little happy little cloud right over here. And then we're going to get some hide glue. And you want to remember the hide glue will always form a skin on tops when it's in your 
thing. So remove that and let's start right up here and paint this all the way down to that edge. We may as well get right up to the edge there because we want that to harden up too. We're going to leave this old fabric here because I think somebody gave it a historic status and I certainly don't want to have to do a California Environmental Quality Act statement or CEQA. Those kinds of things seem to follow me around even though the circumstances thereof are not always under my control or direct responsibility. And I'm not Jesus. I don't pay for other people's sins. Sorry about that. That sounded really personal, didn't? Well, it wasn't. Now, we're going to do this right here. We're going to center that up where that crack is. Just like so. And then... We are going to go right over the top of that. And um, yeah, I know that the perfect coloration of the Chick Flick Teal muslin may be altered, but face it, short of you right now and the person that opens up this guitar 80 years from now and goes oh my gosh this is a real Palmiro junk pile guitar nobody's gonna see it and I'm not sure everybody cares the way you do and that is what's wrong with this world right now people for sure Okay, you can see this side is done now. It's still a little bit glossy, but that's kind of how it dries up. Everything looks pretty good. We flipped it over, and what I've done now is I've pulled the tape off that was acting as a base for the crack, so if any glue were to come through, it would have. And now what I've done is re-taped it or remasked it with this little um, low, I mean low-tack tape, so all the cracks are here. We're going to fill up the glue syringe, handy stuff, with hide glue, and we're going to work glue down into these individual cracks here. Notice that this one is um, still open a bit, but we're going to work glue down into those cracks. It won't be able to go anywhere because this is sealed up, and then we're going to take a suction cup and mash it in and get things set and this will pretty much take care of the back notice that I didn't pull off the marks where it's going to go back to the body once this is done you see we can get a little bit of flex out of it still and nothing opens up so let me get these cracks sealed now all right before we finally flip this thing over what's that oh yeah you're on a need to know basis and you don't need to know so I've been warming up this hide glue in my hide glue heater and we're going to squirt some of this in the glue syringe look at that puppy and now you just put this in like so and screw the top on something like that and now We're going to get a piece of paper towel, which we should have gotten before. Yeah, can't miss that opportunity before instead of after the disaster. Anyway, we got plenty of warm water here, so we can pull this off here. Now, again, I have taken all the places where there is a slight crack there and we are going to no this isn't guitar Botox but we are just going to squeeze that 
right in those cracks like this and you see this thing lays down a nice bead here now I want you to notice that this part right here does not close up all the way right there and I didn't go down to the end because I'm gonna show you why here in a minute yeah this glue syringe is pretty pretty handy and again we've got one here it doesn't close up all the way and I really I, I put a little extra right there and you're gonna see why and then we got this one that was kind of been haunting us like so we'll pull that a little bit back and wipe it off and then I'm gonna put that in the hot water now I'm gonna take this that's right chick flick teal brush and I'm going to take this unknown substance over here. And I'm going to take some of that excess glue. And I'm going to put this into the crack right there. Because when you can see where it's fixed, yeah, it's going to be chick flick teal. Isn't that completely and utterly this amazing now we're going to take our suction cup and I've explained this to you before you don't want to be pumping it up and down like this because think about it if you push on this and there's suction the minute you let go it's going to pull the glue out so what are we doing right so we're going to take this and we're going to start up here before we hit the crack and we're just going to push down and we're going to push it there you see like so and I'm just going to keep doing that a few times and it all pushes down into the crack you see that now I'm going to go to the ones again do not stop do not pick up and down just push it right in there wipe it off there we go now these big ones here we're just gonna start here and we're gonna go all the way down and we're gonna get to the part where the chick flick teal unknown substance is and we're gonna wipe this off good because we don't want chick flick teal where chick flick teal is not wanted yeah chick flick teal has a choice in life that's right okay now we're going to do this one over here we're down to the chick flick teal spot oop look at that do 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 and we're going to let that harden up for a bit and then i got another completely and utterly disamazing thing to show you with a razor blade and some scotch tape okay so while the back is doing his thing it's time to tackle this one and we know that um, we do not like this and the reason why is this is just common veneer that you put on uh, cheap furniture that's been had the edges chipped off and it actually has an adhesive on the back and it's running the same way as the grain here so it's no surprise that when the crack is underneath it and it tensions up that this is going to split too so we're going to take our trusty iron and hobo hot plate along with our palette knives and heat up the adhesive under here and redo those seams with our trusty new discovery chick flick teal muslin banding or whatever you want to call it I also want to call your attention to this little crack that's developing right here that doesn't seem to be a stress crack this is just the wood shrinking up and then while we're in here we want to make sure that we take our glue syringe and go along and redo this and anywhere where that kerfing might be loose and also we're going to take a trusty this is the best thing ever. Stumac makes 
a wood file that is so cool we want to make sure that we go through and knock anything down that's sticking up here and also on the back there were a couple of things and there's a piece of kerfing that was glued in there and then finally I'm going to put a set of Grover in Imperials on this thing which is going to make it really really top heavy or neck heavy it's going to want a neck dive so I am going to add some weight on here with a really heavy wood and then we're going to figure out what while we're in here the grounding wire and the jack etc we can get all that fixed up and finally yeah you know i'm going to bolt this neck on once we get the angle pitch set so i'm going to take care of what needs to be done here by setting my t-knot and all of that right there before we seal this thing up so i got a lot to do here and i'll show you when it's done except i want to talk about one more thing here you see that telltale piece of fabric there that tells us that this tone bar that came out that started to have a little split there goes in to match up right there so we are going to glue this in right where it needs to be and that's going to call for a little bit of sanding and some weight to be put down so once i've got some tape here and my iron's not hot i can do that and tape this and we'll all be good to go there's only going to be one time i'm going to be in here and now's the time to take care of business okay here's the little razor blade trick first off you want to be very careful with your razor blades if they're floating around, put them on a magnetic surface so you don't cut yourself. But here's the trick. Most people cut themselves trying to get this paper off the blade. Trust me on that one. So, um, there we got it. Nobody got cut. So if I lay this across here and use the center of it, you can tell how wide I'm going to need to scrape so we're going to scrape this off with the glue but we're not going to harm the finish on this fine guitar so I'm going to take some cellophane tape and I'm just going to put it just a little bit outside of the width of that you see that like so and then I'm just going to fold it over like this and set that back down and put another piece about right there now what will happen is the thickness of this tape will be what protects the top of the guitar so if i start taking um, this stuff off and coming in here like so you know what let's leave that on there for a second and i just put that part right here and scrape you can see that the thickness of the masking tape isn't letting the blade touch we just want to pull this off here like so and we will take the blade down and wherever the glue is sticking up like right there there we go it will take it down to level like so this works for binding it works for a lot of different things but you'll notice that outside of there there's nothing to touch best scraper ever now if you want to be economical once this is roughed up you can move over here you can do whatever you want as long as you've got this and this you're in business okay so while we've got the hot plate going on over here with uh grandma's iron on it and our palette knives heating up to pull this stuff off we're just going to take some 400 grit and go over where this tone bar was and level this off a little bit here like so and get that ready and then we'll take this little palette knife that i've done for the kerfing and once things warm up remember there's glue on here and we'll just go underneath here 
and loosen this up as we go along. And then we're going to redo um, these strips over here with some of our brand new scrap apparatus and take and use our glue injection needle and do a little arch top Botox right here on this grain crack right here and then go along and anywhere where we've got makes this separation a little bit of this curfing right here we're just going to go along and retouch this stuff up so you see how this lays out a real nice bead here yeah we don't want to be back in here for another 80 years because i'll be here but i'm not sure y'all will right down there to the tail block there we go once we get a little bit of heat on this stuff it wants to pop right loose okay we've got a couple of these done already and when you get down to where somebody's glued some wood in you can always just take a, sh uh, a chisel and remember that things are arched you can just kind of go along and flatten things out and then take your 400 grit and smooth things off like so this is nice because it curves to the surface and then we're just going to take our hide glue and coat it I don't know that the acoustic qualities of this guitar are going to be well they weren't that great to begin with but there's going to be a good pickup on here so We'll kind of ignore all that. All right, we have all of our muslin banding or whatever you want to call it here put in place. So the last thing we're going to need to do now is dump everything on the floor and then put this tone bar back in. So. I'm going to use an ample supply. Again, we have sanded this down. And then we're just going to weight this up and clamp it in the right places. And close this episode out. Alrighty then, I decided to seal up this episode by sealing up this guitar. These are spool clamps. You've seen them before. If I have a card, I will give you the episode on how to make those right up there, right about now. But anyway, here's what I'll tell you. You can't tell anybody. I'm not really done with this. I'm going to do some more stuff to the inside. i got to weight it up because I want to put some tuners on this that are heavy and I don't want neck dive and... Um, I'm going to hot rod this thing up, so there's stuff to do inside here. But here, let's let's pretend, shall we, that what I'm telling you is not a lie. But you can see I've used spool clamps here, and we've got this thing sealed up. Now, I will tell you this. If you are going to take the back off of an arch top guitar, it is literally a surgical procedure. It is a nightmare the guitar, once it cuts loose from, it's like relatives that hate each other, the sides, the top, the, the soundboard, and the back. They're like relatives that hate each other. They, as soon as they can get apart from each other, they run, and they start moving away and stuff. So it, it's really that bad. Uh, but I will tell you this. If you inject a little steam in here and get things hydrated well, it'll make this gluing up easier. But you definitely need some spool clamps and some patience. Um, who do I want to give a shout out to? Well, back to the same people that we did at the beginning of the episode. Curtis Novak Pickups. If you look on the, yeah, this is Bob the Junk Pile Arch Top. There is a Curtis Novak Pickup on there, even though there are Chick Flick Teal screws. Um, oh, ask Nathaniel Adams. Guess what this goes on? This is a wooden tailpiece. Why is it wooden? Well, because in World War II, they were rationing metal, so 
people became ingenious. They have one that's hardwood, they have one that's dyed to look like hardwood. What does this go on? You know it. The Galliano junk pile, yes. Thank you, Nathaniel Adams, S. Nathaniel Adams. There's links below. Now, last thing, when we go into the next episode, we're going to be putting the neck back on this thing and getting all of our angle and trigonometry-ness back in where it needs to be so we can put a fancy bridge on this thing. And would you believe this or not? Do you know what these are? Yeah, these are Grover Imperial tuners. Why would somebody put $200 worth of tuners on this junk pile? Well, so you could cover it. Anyway, guys, I know this episode was really long, but it kind of should open your eyes to some new things, including how ridiculous it is to take the back off an arch top guitar. Hey, do me a favor. Subscribe if you haven't. Give me a like and tell your friends in this world, you don't have to watch me if you supply the victim that will. See you next time.